Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome back to reading set number four, and we're going to continue on um, with uh, reading some Golden Age comics. And what we're going to do is read another comic from Avon Publications, Avon Periodicals. And for some reason, in the previous video, when we're reading um, Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders, I kept on calling this publishing company Avalon. Uh, so that was echoing in my mind. I sort of caught that in my editing, and someone commented that I was calling it Avalon instead of Avon. So it is Avon Publications, and we mentioned that these guys um, produced a lot of comics in the 1940s and 50s, and they were a publishing house that created other types of uh, material as well, a lot of paperbacks and stuff like this, and they continued on. They were bought out a few times over the years. And I believe they were still publishing comics up to the early 2000s, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So what we're going to do, we're going to read another comic from them. And this is U.S. Tank Commandos. And this thing came out in 1952. And the cover for this is done by the same artist that uh, did three of the stories uh, for Teddy Roosevelt and uh, and the rough riders and that's uh, everett uh, kinsler everett's um, raymond kinsler right and he did a lot of work as we mentioned um, in teddy roosevelt comic he did a lot of work in the 1940s and 50s and then sort of progressed from there and started doing portrait work and he became uh, fairly famous doing portraits for a lot of actors and actresses and uh, movie stars and presidents and scientists and we took a look at some of those portraits in the previous video as well right so what we're going to do we're going to take a look at this thing we're going to read through it and this is an anthology and it contains uh, four main stories okay and uh, one thing that i found out uh, in uh, when i was looking this up to see who the artists and creators and writers were for this uh, this is one of the golden age comics and there's a few of these around where we really don't know who a lot of the artists and the writers were for this comic and um, just a little bit of paper from the the side right that's uh chunked out it's fallen out so i'm going to save this and i usually if i buy any comics which have chipping and this one does have chipping where some of the some of the paper is falling off i still put it in the comic book okay in the bag so i still preserve this stuff and um, i'm not sure why but I, I do it because i don't i don't really look into restoring comic books but i do keep this stuff just in case uh, one day i do decide to restore them or you know if i want to sell them if anyone wants to restore them so i sort of put it in there and then i put the comic back in if someone wants to restore them they do have the original paper that they can restore it with right um but as far as the artists and writers for this goes there wasn't very much info online available on this there isn't too much known about this um the cover is uh everett raymond kinsler okay so he did the he's the same artist that did the artwork for teddy roosevelt and the rough riders and when i was looking this up i found out that there was um you know another artist was referenced which is chu f hing okay chu fuk hing and he was supposed to have a couple of single page stories in this comic but they're not in here but this is a complete comic so i think the online resources are incorrect and um, i tried checked out a couple of online resources but they're they're usually referencing the same material so one of them was um, comicbookplus.com and they provide a fair bit of info uh in regards to in regards to comic books and another one is um comics.org also provides some info and comic book database provides some info but all of those sources said that there's supposed to be a couple of one pagers in this from chu fuk hing but there aren't so i ended up going down, down 
down that rabbit hole and trying to figure out who this Chu Fu Hing was. And um, I found some info and I'd like to read you some of that information. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to sort of flip through this. and I'm just going to read you a little bit of a write up and I'll provide the article that I came across for that write up uh, regarding um, Chu F. Hing. Uh, while we're flipping through this, just to take a look at uh, what this is about. And this looks pretty cool artwork, right? Again, when I bought this thing, I flipped through it. And this is graded at around 2.5 to 2.5. And I would agree with that grade. Um, the top stable is loose, right? Let me just show you this. Check this out, right? So the top stable is, uh, has come detached. There is no staining on this. But there is chipping. A little bit of chipping on the cover, right? Right there, if you can see it. So I would grade this as a 2.5, possibly a 3. Um, the inside pages are not bad. There's a little bit of rip here. Okay. And um, this is supposed to contain uh, four stories, four, four short stories. And again, we don't know. There's no information of who the artists and writers are for this comic other than uh, supposedly true F Hing having a couple of one pages here and um, Everett uh, Kinsler doing the cover work for this okay so let's flip through this and I'm gonna read you this little write-up um, for Chu Fu Fing and I found a page where or a few pages where they show some of his artwork and his artwork is brilliant it's not the same person here um, but his artwork's brilliant, and I'm probably going to most likely show you some of the artwork in this video while we're reading this thing. But let me read you this thing, okay? So it's it's a long article. I'm not going to read you everything. I'm just going to read you the stuff related to the comic book aspect of it because this, the write-up goes into some detail. And the write-up is from a website called Chinese American Eyes, okay? And the title for that website is... Chinese American eyes, uh, famous, forgotten, well known, and obscure visual artists of Chinese descent in the United States. Right. And the first sentence of that article is Chu Fuk Hing was born on January 17th, 1897, in the city of Kappa on the, in Hawaii, right? So it was Chinese descent, born in Hawaii, so it was an American citizen. And you know, it goes into some detail of, uh, you know, how he got to the mainland United States and he, how he got into doing some artwork and stuff like this. And here's a little bit of uh, a write-up about his stuff on comic books. Um, Leonard Starr, who was also at Funnies Inc., said, Chu Hing, who did nice work and boosted, he had studied with Harvey Dunn, but his character's Characters' eyes always looked oriental when he drew them. No matter who they were, he was very, very proud of himself. Later, Hing was on staff at Timely Publications, which would evolve into Marvel Comics. Artist Pierce Rice joined Marvel, joined Timely in 1948 and recalled how the bullpen operated. Okay. One of the mistakes Stan Lee made is whenever a penciler finished a job, he'd have him hand it to an inker, Rice said. Whichever inker was free, no partnership developed and no continuity. He lived in fear of two inkers on the staff, Hing Chu and Fred Ing. I used to dread the thought of something falling into Fred's hands, but we had no choice in the matter. And, um, you know, there's a little bit more info uh, regarding um, Chu, Chu F. Hing. And uh, there's a little, one little paragraph which links to some of the pages that Hing had done. And Hing's comic book work can be viewed. So I'm quoting again. Hing's comic book work can be viewed here. The Art of Fu Chu F. Hing, part one one page features and i'm going to show you a couple of the 
or probably shown you already a couple of the pages that are supposed to be in this one of them was um, uh, the pony express truth not fancy so it's just a one pager that Hing was supposed to have done and uh, I looked it up and it looks beautiful right fantastic artwork and then uh, there's another one pager that he was supposed to be in this on um, the archives are saying it's supposed to be in this comic but it's not and the other one is uh, called Will Rogers a great American okay and that's a beautiful piece of artwork on that one as well so as you can tell the golden age of comics there's a some confusion as to who the artists are where the pages appear uh, who should be credited with this information right and one thing uh, uh, Chu F. Hing did and it's in this article as well you can see the see the see the artwork there which is brilliant uh, just continuing on with uh, that paragraph the art of Chu Fing Hing part 2 covers and stories for various publishers so there's another link to another page with covers and stories right and then there's part three where the work he did for Marvel Comics, which is timely, really. And then there's part four, the work he did on his own character that he created, which is the Green Turtle and Judge and the Jury. And the artwork for Green Turtle is absolutely fantastic. I love the way he did the panel work on it. And this uh, the green turtle i hadn't heard about it before but uh it sort of hit my radar and i'm gonna try to get my hands um, on the green turtle i don't you know th i've just started looking uh and uh, if i get my hands on the green turtle some of the artwork that chu fing hing chu fuk hing has done uh especially the green turtle this this issue that he put out or issues that he put out i'm gonna look a little bit further into this uh, we will definitely do a reading on that because the artwork I found to be absolutely magnificent okay so that's my little intro to this comic and most of it is not really the intro to this comic but most of it is the intro sort of talking about Chu F. Hing whose artwork doesn't appear in this comic but it's from the golden age um, of comics and I found it extremely interesting um, so what we're gonna do now is uh, how to read through this so i'm gonna again put on my uh, glasses so we can read everything in here and i can read the words properly as properly as i can anyway with the names and stuff right uh so let's take a look at this thing um the fighting daredevils of the usa u.s tank commandos 10 cents number one and it's from 1952 it was released in june 1952 And it's signed right here. Take a look. Everett Raymond Kinsler. Oops. Everett Raymond Kinsler. Right. So he did the artwork for the cover. Nice artwork. Again, very nice details, nice lines, nice flows. Awesome face. Or usually faces and what we saw in Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders, right? But beautiful work. So let's take a flip through this. And as far as grade goes, I know I didn't uh, mention the grade on this. Ah, and actually we did talk about it, but we didn't look at too much of the details of what was going on while we were getting the info and the uh, true webbing. But again, this is a grade 2.53. Somewhere, I would say 2.5 for sure. And this, the cover is a little bit ripped here, right? Let's take a look at this. Let's read the fine print before we start reading any of the pages. Right. See if we can get it close enough so you can read as well. U.S. Tank Commandos, June 1952, Volume 1, Number 1. Published quarterly by Avon Periodicals Incorporated, 575 Madison Avenue, New York. 22 new york jose myers president sol cohen editor 
and General Manager, copyright 1952 by Avalon Periodicals Inc. All names in this periodical are entirely fictitious and no identification with actual persons is intended. Printed in the USA. And I believe the address from Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders to this one has changed, right? I think it was a number 19 in the previous one, which is interesting. They might have moved offices, right? So let's read the first uh, sort of the front back cover on this. U.S. tank commandos, huge and po uh, ponderous, the great machines look like prehistoric beasts, but they were twice as deadly. The test of the tank commandos. If you like your war comics, uh, this is a treat. As you know, I'm collecting some war comics, right? I do like collecting war comics and love comics and horror comics and sci-fi comics of the golden age, right? Like many hardcore collectors, I guess. Or many collectors, really. Out of the Korean hills rolled the Reds' most deadly secret weapon, a gigantic super tank commanded by a woman of fabulous beauty, the Battle of the Iron Monsters. Wow. Lots going on on that page, eh? Think about it. If Captain Vic Storm led his tank commandos into battle, it meant almost certain destruction. But if he retreated, hundreds of GIs would lose their lives. The death trap. So each one of these, okay, this one, the test of the tank commandos, that's the first story, the test of the tank commandos. The next one here, that's sort of cool, sort of a table of contents, the back, uh, the f uh, back of the front cover, the battle of the iron monsters, okay, that's the second story in this piece death trap okay. is the third story in this piece and there should be a fourth story in this piece as well so um we'll take a look at this i'm not sure if we're going to read all of them again i mean last time we did read through the whole thing teddy roosevelt and the rough riders uh, but we'll take a look at this we flip through it looks pretty cool and this is uh the korean war right so Let's have a read. This book, let's see, let's make sure you can read this, right? This book is dedicated to the valiant fighting men of the armed divisions who carried the fight to the enemy. A legend has subsequently been attributed to them. A legend born from the test of the U.S. tank command. We're in the midst of a battle here, right? The rat -ta 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 -ta. Machine gun. Sir, they're sending their fighters against us. Open up, boys. We're going to attack them while they're on the ground. He says. So this is the enemy, I'm assuming. Their planes, right? They're attacking an airport. A group of high brass is seated around the conference conference table in Washington, D.C., discussing the Korean War. Again, we're stalemated, and every hour means more of our boys risking their lives. Why not use more planes, he says. We have, and with excellent results, but still the Reds have stopped us. We need something big to throw them back and protect our troops too. 
So I guess here's the line, the dashed line, where the boundary is, right, from the south and the north. What type of weapon is that? The tank? I know what you're thinking. Korea is too rugged a terrain for armed units. But did you consider light tanks? But what, pre what will prevent the Reds from using armor-piercing shells? Nothing but maneuver maneuverability, gentlemen. And I know of only one man who can handle this major victor storm. Ma this major victor storm a few days later at the army army proving grounds here he comes sir he's nearing the target at an angle of maximum firing power watch carefully let's take a look did we read the text that he said yeah we did just making sure we didn't skip any bubbles words right in the last uh, read i skipped one bubble and went back i had to read it bam 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 crunch so this this tank just took this out right the steel monster crushes the pill box Seconds later, the hatch opens and Major Vic Storm greets his superiors. I hope you're satisfied, gentlemen. Fine job, Vic. Incredible that almost Im impenetrable defense was leveled within minutes. Could you duplicate that again? Yes, and we have. We have a new type of recoilless gun in our machine machines that bolsters the impact power of the shells. We have our answers, gentlemen. The tank is going to appear in Korea. Major, your unit is to be alerted at once. Good luck. Thank you, sir. They're shaking. A night of being toasted at a merry unit party, then weeks of weary journey. Nice little panel work there. Storytelling. That's really cool stuff. And finally, Korea. Vic Storm and his men arrive at the front to find the deadlocked army waiting grimly. Everything we throw at them makes them dig in deeper, send in some strafing planes. I've already done that, sir. Colonel Bradley, I'm asking permission to try and take the, take the ridge. All right, Storm, but be careful. Your tin cans won't stand a chance in this hilly area. We'll try our best. Come on, boys. Let's go. I'll give you all the air support I can. I have. Shoot up a flare when you're in position. So the test of the tank commandos begins. We're approaching the base of the ridge, sir. Sergeant, send up the flare. Bam, bam. Machine gun fire right down there. Kong Chu Gaino. That's one of the Korean fighters. I wonder if that means anything, translates into anything. They're withdrawing up the hill. Form, form an arrowhead for our own men. Signal the flyboys. The message is through, Major. Good. Now we have now we have to get our GI safely put. Guys, we're reaching the peak. Watch it.
level off. We're too close to that embankment. Can't, sir. The stick's dead. One of those landmines must have hit the shift lever. The land battleship spins around in the soggy mud. The ooze slowly gives way under the tank's weight and we're toppling over. Hold on, boys. Oh, the tank goes over. Crash. Vic Storm slowly regains consciousness to see the face of an Oriental. Make no move or I'll kill. Your companion's dead. You come. He shot the others, the dirty rats. The enemy, pushing Major Storm in front of them, make their way towards a clearing two miles from the ridge. I must have been out for hours. Wonder what happened up on the ridge. You enter hut. Vic faces a red Chinese colonel, commander of the rich forces. I am Colonel Wan Tong, Major. We successfully assaulted your troops with reinforcements. You are fortunate to have remained alive. So that's why my boys couldn't help us. What is the strength of your tank unit? Where are you based? How many are you? Speak up. Colonel, all I'm required to do is give you my name, rank, and serial number. Swine, you will answer immediately or I shall have you shot. Already our pilots wait nearby to bomb your tanks. Your information will lay, will aid them. We're at coordinates XL3, about 10 tanks of the 5th Division. Lieutenant, check this information with Sergeant Hu at the com communications hut. At once, Colonel. Vic, now, and now is alone with the Red Colonel. This is his chance. It's now or never. Drop that gun, fat boy. Thud. Ugh. He's out cold. Now to wait for Buster to return. Seconds later, an angry lieutenant rushes in to inform his superior that the information was false. This is for Lutz, Lutz and Bell Rat. Bang, bang. Shoots up. Vic hurriedly puts on the uniform of the commie lieutenant. Maybe I can make it over to that communications hut those weren't pleasure ships i saw lined up on that airstrip moments later major storm reached the, the rear entrance of the hut gambling gambling desperately for time that's him right there got a little hat on if these gooks oh my god if these gooks get in the air we're through They'll rip our tanks to shreds. I've got to warn our boys. The American, kill him. I can play it tough too. Bam, they're shooting at him. If one of these bullets hit that transmitter, I'm sunk. Ra -ta 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 -ta. Lots of machine gun fire. Oh, it takes them all out. 
Red Horse, calling Red Horse. Blue Charlie sent six iron jockeys to coordinates FT9. Counterattack airstrip, code Thrulu Thrulu. Storm over. I hope they I hope they heard me. Meanwhile, sounds of the gunfire has brought out the entire airfield's personnel. He is in there. Blow up the hut. At once, my colonel. The Yankee dog will never trouble us again. Order our squadron into the air. But lying prone in the tall grass yards away from the hut in the figure is the figure of Vic Storm. Phew. Another moment in there and that would have been it. Uh oh. The grease monkeys are re revving up the motors. The field is bustling with infuriated activity. And now, in the midst of it all, steps Vic Storm. Get away from those crates. He again, shoot him down. Machine gun fire. He's taking on the whole Air Force. Vic tries to hold them back. But one man is no match for many. Die, die, yeah. Well, it was fun while it lasted. I guess he might be out of bullets. That's why he thinks he's done for. Suddenly, roaring out of the forest, come six giant more monsters spewing hot lead and flames. Vic's unit has come through. Ye, retreat, run for your lives. Come on, boys, give it to them. He's right there. Bow, bow. The Koreans are running away. Major, where are the planes? Over there, Gonzalez. Use your flamethrowers, quick. Okay, hop in, colonels, hop in. Colonels sent in f a fighter canopy as well to back us up. Here they come. There's the fighters. And they're firing on the planes that are on the ground. The next 20 minutes is a battle of titanic proportions. UN planes and tanks leave a wake of destruction in their path. That does it. Let's go home, boys. We've done our good deed for the day. And back at UN headquarters, a surprise greeting, Vix, a surprise greets Vic Storm. Major, you've won that ridge. It was practically empty when, the atta when we attacked it. Well, I'll be. They must have recalled their troops to fight us at the airstrip. I'll never doubt the striking power of your tin cans again. We'll spearhead every attack with them from now on. Thank you, sir. And now, if you'll excuse me, I want to kiss a battered old crate of steel that pulled us through. Uh, he's talking about the tank, I'm assuming, right? U.S. tank. So that's the first story. So this is sort of like a broken down into different chapters, right? Now I've got our advertisements. Only a dollar fifty post paid. Money back guarantee. Speedy stitcher. Stitch like a machine. Sews a lock stitch like a machine. What is that? Oh, it's like a needle you can stitch the thread goes there and it goes through there goes through the eye of the needle there right huh. 
Haiku. Fear no one. Master American Combat Judo. World's lowest price adding machine. Oh wow, super cool. A calculator. Only two ninety five. Wow. Posted page. Ten days free trial. Handsome, rich looking leather casing. Oh man, I would love to have one of these in my collection. An adding machine. Baby calculator. <laughs> cool. Let's read the second story too. Okay. I don't know if you can hear it. It's really windy outside. It's stormy. So let's take a look at the page. Things are being knocked around a little bit. Good time to read a war comic, I guess, right? Take a look at this. That's a gigantic tank, right? Ah, and that's the lady, the one that uh, the story at the front cover, right? U.S. Tank Commandos, The Battle of the Iron Monsters. Cool. Let's read the intro to it. The appearance of the tank in battle provided proved to be a major factor in the bolstering of UN, UN spearheads. But this advantage was not to last long, for out of North Korea's hill came a super tank piloted by a beautiful but ruthless female colonel who challenged the might of Vic Storm's unit in a duel to the death. The Battle of the Iron Monsters. The gigantic seesaw struggle, struggle that is Korea, now has veered into a favor of the UN forces. Our scene opens at Red Field headquarters near Charwon. Looks like the same guy colonel from the previous story bah you call yourselves officers but you are incompetent chewing them out pardon our on honorable commander command comrade but general cho was party approaches good the general has sent us an expert on ground assault thrusts now we shall push ahead this guy machine gunning I don't think you want to be standing up in front of the tank on top with someone's machine gunning you right be careful we don't want the damage to the comic the excited group the excited group rushes out to see a large sed sedan making its way th towards them silence we must show our new leader the respect do him behold the door opens now you're a commander una i am natasha chan colonel in the special attack force assigned to your area but but I I thought higher headquarters would send a a man. I am I am the equal of any man, or do you question the authority of our superiors in sending me here? No, of course not, Colonel Chan. What are your orders? Our glorious people's army is to strike immediately at hill 234 and 236. The capitalist dogs have kept us in check too long, but now we have a new weapon. And the tank's rolling in from the background, right? The super tank. What is it? It looks like a monstrous monster vehicle. Indeed it is, for rumbling around the bend of the road is the largest tank in existence a veritable dreadnought 
Yes, comrade, we have built this in secret. Now we intend to test this fire power in battle. But how will you protect it from enemy air attack, my colonel? You need cover and many soldiers. I will hold your, you responsible for seeing that we have them. Wanna? Mark well my words, we shall be invincible. And a day later, in an advanced foxhole on Hill 234, holy cow, Joe, do you see what I see? Yeah, sound the alarm, quick. Here comes the tank, the monster. Within seconds, the inactivity of the American units holding Hill 23 explodes into grim fighting as the monster tank reaches the crest. Clue, clue, alert. Air Johnny's enemy super tank on coordinates N45S16. Hurry. This guy's calling it in, right? He's calling it air power. Or backup, anyway. Pour those anti tank rounds into them. I am, but nothing happens. It's too big. I tell you, fall back, fall back. Meanwhile, at the co coordinating hut, Behind UN, UN lines, Major Vic Storm is tracing the red counter thrust. The tank has just penetrated our first line, sir. Then it's no ordinary tank. Those traps should have smashed it to bits. Any orders, Major? Activate Fuller's F-80 squadron. There to begin the attack, okay? Guys, let's go. While in flight, in flight of F-80s warm up on the runway, Vic and his men run towards their Sherman. The battle is on. Here's hoping our Joe can hold. Where, where is the enemy now, Jake? Is through our second barrier, sir. Look at the explosions. Now Vic's unit rushes to bridge the gap, and the F-80 strike at the steel monster that lumbers onwards so relentlessly. Can't understand it. It's still moving. That isn't a tank. It's a fortress. And behind, and behind it, are the counterattack Reds. Death, death to the Yankees! Come and get it, comrades! Oh, they're like face to face. It's almost hand to hand combat now. That's enough, men. We're abandoning our positions. Looks like the gooks are taking over the hill. Oh, look at this. Like full on hand to hand combat. By now, Vic has reached the battleground, followed by a dozen of his cronies. Whoever Whoever is in that tin can knows his onions. Fuller's flyboys haven't even dented his armor. Major, listen to this. What you know? Dressed up knee. Legit, I think that's supposed to be Russian. I'd swear it's coming from our red pal in that can. A girl's voice. Well, I'll be. Nice 
I saw it work. The surprise is cut short, however, for the super land monster has has spot, spotted them. It rumbles towards them, guns blazing. Johnson's hit, boom, they just exploded one, took one out. Order all units to withdraw. Behold, my colonel, the capitalist flee we have won. Crush them, not one must escape. In the background, you can see the tanks running away, right? Retreating. But 20 minutes later, the tank unit has regrouped at a vantage point behind the hill. Phew, what an experience. Vic, what was that thing? Fuller just reached me by intercom. His pilots can't get it. It hugs the ground like a mole. Let's face it, this is one of their new contraptions. It has unbelievable armor and incredible maneuverability. But it can't be but it can be beaten, boys. I have an idea. When night falls, combat engineering units work quickly and quietly under Vic's direction. Morning finds a tense group waiting. Wonder what the Major's got in store for the gooks. If I know him, it's going to be good. Suddenly, from the dense reaches of the hill, comes a pounding of guns, a screaming of rockets and shells, and a rumbling of tank treads. Well... We certainly didn't have to wait long. Here they come. Yeah. The planes are trying to bomb it. These guys, the Koreans are running in. Sir, there's our baby over yonder by the river. She's heading straight for Hill 236. There it is. Right there she is. Let's see if we can't change her mind. Give the signal, Sergeant. Proceed with Blue Charlie, Unit 26 and 48. Signals away, Major. Okay, and here we go. Boom, boom, boom. The Shermans roll at top speed to intercept the coming oncoming metal colossus their treads biting deeply into the frozen mud grady cover our frank adams use those cannons use use them cannon how are you doing stein roger major 3 -oh, i'm attacking the one colonel the yankees intend to hem us in by employing childish encircling tactics. Bring your guns to bear on them, one at a time, quickly. We have scored a direct hit, ha ha. I took one out. Concentrate your fire at the second tank now. We will methodically destroy these stupid fools, one by one. The U.S. tanks mill around the monstrous dreadnought like dogs warring and snarling bear. But at the, at the firepower that the enemy catches them, they break and run. Get out while the going is good. After them, oofs. After them. They're running away. They've taken our bait. How near are we to the trap? We're almost on top of it. Pull over towards the right. Gang, pull. Watch out. Hey. They see something. Bro. I guess they planted explosives in the ground under them, right? Took it out. 
Yahoo, we did it. Blast it on boys. Give it everything you've got. Like a wild animal in the pit. Nothing can get out of that 40 foot hole. Oh, it's a hole they dug. It's right there, I guess. Right. They built a pit and trapped them. Now they're in the hole. Rolled over right there. Yeah, but they'll stay hold, hold up for hours. We can't waste time firing at them that long. We don't have to. They have to eat sometime. And when that hatch opens, we'll have them. You're right. Look, they're surrendering. Uh, the tank is upside down. Well, boys, we got ourselves a prize to send back to intelligence. That tank may be good. But good as it is, it still can't beat plain American horse sense. Now let's go win back our hill. Let's take a look at these. The amazing invention. Magic art reproducer. Draw the first day. No lesson, no talent. You can draw your family, friends, anything from real life like an artist even if you can't draw a straight line look at this. takes the image and sort of reflects it here right mirror work cute Take a look. free 10-day trial coupon cut out the coupon send it in Crash land to glory. One man armed, armored army. Huh. So these are just uh, stories. Cool. We'll go to the comics. Let's read the next story in this U.S. Tank Commandos. U.S. Tank Commandos Death Trap. Take a look at this. That's really nice artwork here, eh? Pretty detailed. This sort of rare reminiscent of uh, some of the 70s uh, comic artwork. Some of the books that I've read anyway. Let's read the story. U.S. Tank Commandos, Death Trap. The UN army is now struck towards Sinchon, beyond the hill. Beyond the hills that had held up their advance for so long. The tenacious enemy, however, yielded stubbornly. And into this man-made hell rode Vic Storm's armed unit, determined to shatter almost shatter almost inaccessible red gun positions in a do or die attempt to save the thousands of lives at stake even though it meant entering a death trap a freezing afternoon in the city of shang yun above the 38th parallel the allies pushing through the shattered streets meet with heavy heavy enemy resistance swivel your guns two notches to the left sergeant there's a clump of guns there we got them major they've been giving us trouble since we entered this burg city warfare City warfare is dangerous, so slow. Well, they won't bother us again. Good work.
The fighting continues well into the night until finally only mopping up operations are left. Phew, that's that. I hope I can get some rest. Amen to that, Sergeant. Hello? That con constellation is landing here. Looks like VIPs. The plane. Vic soon finds, finds that Ada out an hour later when he stands before a combined army, Marine, Air Force, and Navy meeting in the town's public building. You sent for me, sir? Yes, Major. We need your expert opinion here. Explaining br briefly the purpose for the for meeting, the general in charge of the attack force outlines their future course of action. This will be a combined operation, gentlemen. We're going to take Sinjon in a totally different battle tactic. Colonel Drake of the 3rd Marine Division is going to drop his men on the Red Hill position via helicopter, while Major General Fuller and his squadron cover him in the air. Captain Su Swell will lay down the initial barrage from the sea. But you, Major Storm, have the most difficult assignment. You're to proceed with your unit to the hill bases and blast every gun position you see, hindering our attack. Can you do it, son? I'll try my best, sir. That next morning, the Yuan offensive begins. They advance from Chungyun to Sinjun is a dangerous one, and every foot of the way contains death. We're reaching the hot spot now, sir. Good. Just on time. Just on time, too. There go our fly boys. Hot some machine gun fire. To sync and synchronize with the marine air, with the main air and ground thrusts are the big guns of the U.S. Navy. Burrow, burrow. Okay, Corporal, signal them to start the shingding. Yes, sir. Calling blue boys. Proceed as directed. Proceed as directed. Red Abel has reached roost. Two minutes later, while jets scream ferociously over Burning Hill Ridge, gliders and helicopters settle lower and lower towards the enemy peaks. Okay, gyrenes, hit the deck. Come on, soldier, soldier boys, keep us, keep us company. But unknown to the UN forces are red gun placements that have remained hidden. Boom, ratatat. Kill them, death to the capitalist swine. There they are, held up, eh? Under the snow. How's it coming, Major Storm? We're not doing well. Those rats can't be knocked off by shells or planes. They're dug into those ridges too deeply. We'll have to withdraw. An hour later, at a temporary base facing the hills. We failed, gentlemen. Three Marine units and two Army combat teams have been lost. Sir, I ask permission to try taking those positions. Ordinarily, I wouldn't grant it, Storm, but in lieu of your past performance, all right. But you have eight hours. After that, we're going to try again. Thank you, sir. Guys, follow me. 
outlining what he wants done. Vic and his men spend the next five hours hammering out spikes, spikes treads, spike treads in machine tents they set up at the base. Do you think it'll work, Major? Bang, bang, bang. They're working on the anvil and stuff. Metal. I don't know. I hope it does. He's a real optimist, Storm. When they are finished, Vic's tank looks like a man-made porcupine. Its tread spiked, chained, and reinforced with jagged metal. Major, let me go with you. No, Jake. Three guys are plenty. So long. There go brave men. Good luck, boys. That's the colonel in the background. I think it's the colonel anyway. Moments later, inside the specialty fitted tank. We're nearing the first hill slope, sir. I can see the ice. All right, steady on the stick now. Sergeant, steady. Brady, shift your way to the other side, quick. We're sliding near the ridge. It doesn't help, we're going to crash. Oh, this guy's worried, look at his face. The huge metal colossal topples upside down and over again, colliding with a group of trees that snaps from the impact. were alive those trees cradle our fall check the gearbox Bradley we're going to try again everything seems okay sir ditto here major then let's go once more the tank tries this precarious ascent to the sum of the hill straining digging itching its way over the ice and snow I'm praying the, the stick don't give way. Hold on, Sergeant. Careful now. Just a bit more. We made it. We've reached the top. Oh, I'll never be the same again. Okay, cut your motors and radio and radio back to the base code. If I'm not back in 10 minutes, attack without me. Itching his way through frozen branches and snow, covered vegetation, Major Storm sneaks up behind a red gun position. Contact area Z. We have word that the Americans will attack now. Holy smoke, five gun positions. He says. No wonder we couldn't take this ridge. Only this one is visible from the air or from below. The others are camouflaged and concealed in those cran crannies. Good thing we have a tank. Foot soldiers can't even make a dent, they have dent here. Time is up. The general's probably alerted our boys by now. They'll be here any minute. All oh, I think. Halt, American dog. You die. Uh, I guess they jump on him. Bark. Thinking I'd jump. Bam, bam. I've got to get back. Here comes the first of our planes. They'll be knocked off unless we can blast those positions first. The planes are flying in from the top and the tank is right there too. 
Vic runs as fast as his legs can carry him in the frigid snow. Then he is beside his tank, shouting out orders. We nearly gave up waiting, Major. Swing this baby around, Sergeant. Hurry, I'll explain later. Wow, where'd they come from? There must be hundreds of them just waiting to pick off our Joes. They played possum all this time to shoot rats. But they're not going to trick us again. There is a nest between those two boulders, the second one's down below it. Right, Major, let's give those jokers a taste of their own medicine. They blow up the position is right yeah Brady to your right man I see him sir they're gunning him down Bam. while the paratroopers come Yahoo! Here come our guys. Look at them. What's the matter, command? Comrade, too hot for you? Boom. Arg. This is for good measure, Corporal. Call base headquarters. Tell them we have situation well in hand. Right you are, sir. A half hour later. It's our hill, Major Storm. The enemy has been wiped out. And there is Sin John down there, boys. We've won our objective. And still, later, back at the base, Shake, son. That was the finest bit of fighting I've seen in a long time. Don't thank me, sir. Thank the Navy, Marines, and Air Force, Air, Air Corps for backing us up. And of course, thank the engineers who built our tanks. War comics. There's definitely lots of propaganda in war comics, that's for sure, right? And lots of propaganda in comics state-sponsored propaganda we've seen some of it in uh, even jingle jangle some of the first readings we did for the comic book readings right they were selling war bonds interesting walkie talkies powered by original remco electric magnetic chassis u.s government patent number two five three six one seven nine two-way walkie-talkies only 349 have fun anyone can learn to dance we saw this dance uh, dance advertisement you can hopefully you can hear the wind blowing it's really windy here right now uh, we saw the same dance advertisement in the previous comic book, right? From Avon Publications Periodicals. So the advertising companies would have probably cut a deal with the publishers and bought the same ad in multiple places, right? At last, the new Bur Burgess all-purpose -pur electric sprayer. Electric sprayer in the 1950s. Super cool. Look at this. You can spray anything. makes painting and spraying easy smooth fast money back guarantee and satisfaction it's always money back guarantee 1095 expensive 1950s should we read the last story as well Storms picking up. 
food for the wind. This one, I think the artworks looks different from uh, from the previous person, right? Nice artwork, beautiful artwork. Oh wow! Joey gets shot in the face. Joey, darn it, Joey, darn it, the blazes. Lots of war, death and destruction. Look at them, they're smiling at the end, right? Hey Jerry, after the war, how about letting me teach you the fine points of swimming? I'm sure I could make a swimmer out of you. Thanks, Shorty. Maybe I'll give you a try. The end. Should we read this one? Wow. Look at the death and destruction there. Take a look at that. Wow, wow, wow. Let me give you a close up of this. Look at the guy flying up. People dying. People dying everywhere. I heard about the show later. After seven hours of bombardment, the gook area was completely leveled. Okay. I think we'll skip this story. Okay, that's about uh, that's enough war and uh, death and destruction in one reading. Yeah, look at that! Wow, beautiful panel though. In terms of war comics, it's amazing. Just everything that's going on is insane. I guess it's Navy bombardment, right? It's taking out the Korean's position. And we got the strong man advertisements. Jet plane, Jetix, Javelin. Now you can fly a real jet plane. There's a piece missing there, a right? little chunk missing there. So the back cover is missing some chunks as well. Interesting read. Interesting read. Charles Atmos. Who is this other person? Oh, this is just looks slimmer. Oh my God, it's like a little... <laughs> it's a little... Uh, Corset for men. The chevalier lifts and flattens your bulging bay window. <laughs> Front adjustment detachable. Wow, this was crazy. I've never seen this one before. What's the price on this? I can't even see the price. Just mail and coupon. Send money. Free trial. Send no money. Send me for 10 days free trial a Chevalier Health. Check this out. Send me for 10 days free trial a Chevalier Health Supporter Belt. A Health Supporter Belt. Uh, I will pay postman $3.98 plus postage with the understanding that includes my free pouch. In 10 days, I will either return Chevalier to you and you will return my money or otherwise my payment will be a full and final purchase price interesting so the mailman could actually collect the money right you could pay the mailman and the mailman would give them their money including postage crazy interesting raid interesting raid 1950s or 1952 june 1952 and those are the, I believe those are the two comics that we had uh, set up for our, uh, reading set number four from Avon Publications, right? Avon Periodicals. And uh, Teddy Roosevelt 
uh, and Howling Commandos, or not Howling Commandos, Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders and U.S. Tank Commandos were two of the comics that uh, were up as a choice uh, that you guys chose to read. So we gave these a read. Interesting. Interesting part of history, that's for sure. That's for sure. Korean War, right? Uh, some propaganda, a fair bit of propaganda for the Korean War, right? Uh, very nice artwork, very cool artwork, nice storytelling. And some beautiful panels in there, right? And uh, if anyone knows who the artists uh, for this comic are, for sure, for sure, post the comments and I'll put a little note in the description of this video. Okay. That's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next reading.